Hey, you're listening to The Vault. I'm your host, Trisha Terinskis, and I have a bit of a treat for you folks who are fascinated with Al Capone. Forum journalist Tracy Briggs put together a three-part series on some incredibly fascinating and definitely not well-known stories of Capone and his shocking connections to Minnesota and North Dakota. This is part one. Here's Tracy. Enjoy. Has this ever happened to you? You go online to just look something up. No big deal. But soon you find yourself going down the deepest, darkest rabbit hole ever, and hours later, you don't even know what happened. Well, that's kind of what happened with my story on Al Capone and his older brother, Vincenzo, or James Capone is what he went by, a more of an Americanized version of that name. Anyway, I found out that Vincenzo... Al's older brother was actually a federal prohibition agent in North Dakota. What? I had never heard this, and I grew up in North Dakota. Anyway, it turns out the Capones have quite the history in North Dakota and um, Minnesota. So I'm doing a three-part series on it, and this is just the first part. So let me just start by talking about Vincenzo Capone. Can you imagine the stress on poor old Vincenzo? As he tried to hide his real identity, what would his fellow Prohibition agent friends think if they found out the man they knew as Richard Hart, a guy fighting corruption and crime just like they were, actually shared a name with the most notorious gangster of the era, Capone? And it wasn't just a shared last name. They shared DNA and parents. Richard Hart was Al Capone's older brother. Now, it all sounds too unbelievable to be true. How could Richard Hart, or Vincenzo Capone, have plotted such a different path for his life than his gangster brothers, Al Scarface Capone, Ralph Bottles Capone, and Frank Capone? I don't know why Frank didn't have a nickname, but anyway, Vincenzo certainly took a different path than all of them. The story of this unlikely family dynamic starts across the Atlantic Ocean. Vincenzo Capone was born near Salerno, Italy in 1892. When he was just a toddler, he immigrated to the United States with his parents, Gabrielle Capone, who was a barber, and Teresa Raiola, a seamstress. The couple eventually had eight more children, including Al, who was fourth in the birth order. Now, all of the Capone children were given Italian names, but as they grew up in Brooklyn, New York, they chose to Americanize them. So Vincenzo, like I said, went by James, and Alphonse became Al, Raphael was Ralph, Salvatore was Frank, and so on. Unlike some of his younger brothers, Vincenzo avoided getting into street fights and gangs, instead choosing to spend time at area horse stables, where he could act out his dreams of living in the Wild West as a gunslinging cowboy. Here's what Jeff MacArthur wrote in his 2015 book about Vincenzo called Two Gun Heart, Lawman, Cowboy, and Long Lost Brother of Al Capone. He said, He avoided the life of the hoodlums and went across the bay to Staten Island, where the homes and shops were separated by grassy fields and woods, where he could wander and forget the crowded metropolis from which he came. Vincenzo left home unexpectedly at 16, most likely with one of the traveling Wild West shows that came through New York. He wrote home later that he had joined the circus. MacArthur writes that eight-year-old Al saw him off on the ferry that day And Vincenzo had to tell his little brother that he had to stay in New York. When World War I broke up, Vincenzo enlisted and was stationed in France. While he sent the occasional postcard home, for the most part, Vincenzo was looking to distance himself from his life in Brooklyn and his Italian heritage. According to Kurt Erichsmoen, Vincenzo believed that being Italian would hinder him from finding meaningful employment, so he changed his name to Richard Hart and claimed he was darker-skinned because he was part Native American. He chose the name Richard Hart in honor of his idol, William Hart, a silent movie cowboy of the era. He was even given William Hart's nickname, Two Gun, after he took part in successful shootouts against bootleggers. Following the passage of the 18th Amendment banning the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors, the federal government authorized the hiring of federal prohibition agents. Hart applied, 
He became an agent and was hired in the summer of 1920. Five years later, he was hired by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to try and keep alcohol off of the reservations. He was sent to the Dakotas and used the Standing Rock Reservation as his base of operation. Eric Smone points out the irony of that particular year. He said, The year 1925 was also the same year that his younger brother, Al Capone, became the head of the violent Torino crime organization in Chicago. This organization became the country's largest trafficker of illegal liquor under Capone's leadership. Because prohibition was largely unpopular and the alcoholism rate on the reservations in the Dakotas was estimated to be about 45%, Hart and his fellow agents were in for a fight. But old Two-Gun was up for the challenge. According to MacArthur, within a year, he had become, quote, the most feared name among bootleggers in the Midwest, end quote. Ashley Thronson of the State Historical Society of North Dakota noted in a blog post that in January of 1926, the Sioux County Pioneer reported on the success of a series of raids on the reservation that netted many victims beside a lot of evidence and other paraphernalia. One such raid resulted in the removal of 25 gallons of alcohol. Hart was declared by the paper as a most crafty enforcement officer. Because of his collaboration with tribal police in fighting poverty and alcoholism on the reservations, many tribal elders respected and admired him and even gave him a teasing nickname, translated from Lakota to mean big hairy thing. (laughs) They might have also trusted him because of his claim to be part Native American and not Italian. In a promotional video for MacArthur's book, Hart's grandson, Jeff, said his grandfather connected with the Native people, learning to speak a couple of Native languages in addition to English and the Italian he had learned at home in Brooklyn. At this point, too, I should tell you there's a really cool uh, YouTube clip, um, a promotional video about the Two Gun Heart book. I would suggest you go there. Just search Two Gun Heart book promo. And it's it's 10 minutes where the family is kind of talking about um, Two Gun Heart. There's also a lot of really neat pictures um, with this. And it's from they're from the Library of Congress and the State Historical Society of North Dakota. So if you're interested in seeing these pictures, I highly recommend you see them. They're pretty they're pretty classic old timey gangster photos, plus um, Richard Hart on the reservation with some tribal elders. Just go to my story on inform.com and search Al Capone and Tracy Briggs, and that should bring you right there. It's lucky that Hart was on the reservation the exact same time as photographer Frank Fisk, who was there to document everyday life at Fort Yates and Standing Rock. The end result was a series of photographs showing Hart standing together with Native American agents and the liquor they confiscated. Fisk also shot cowboy portraits of Hart that probably satisfied that old desire to be a Wild West star. Again, you can find these photos on my story on inform.com, or you can also look on the Library of Congress or State Historical Society of North Dakota. They're pretty, they're pretty funny. It's pretty clear Hart was proud of the work he did as a prohibition agent in North Dakota. Thronson said, according to records in Fisk's business ledger, Hart purchased 12 postcards of these cowboy shots of him for a total of $5, which was pretty big money back then. So here's a big question. Did Al Capone, his little brother, know about Vincenzo becoming Richard Hart? Well, it appears that he did. Newspaper reports of that time suggest the two men had been seen together even at the height of Prohibition. According to MacArthur, a Chicago photographer named Tony Berardi claimed to have met Hart and Capone together in 1924 when the gangster introduced his eldest sibling as a prohibition officer in Nebraska. This is what MacArthur says. Apparently proud of his brother, Al revealed no animosity toward him and was, in fact, showing him off. Richard, on the other hand, seemed in awe of the situation. Where he was living in the Dakotas, bootleggers had to hide. Here, his brother and his gang walked openly in the streets of Chicago. Not only was Al not having to hide, he was a local celebrity. MacArthur said the two brothers basically agreed to stay out of each other's territories. But eventually, the Capones reconnected. By 1928, Hart left North Dakota and was transferred to the Spokane Indian Reservation to continue his work. But as Prohibition ended and the Great Depression took hold, work was hard to come by. 
Hart apparently swallowed his pride and sought help from his famous and wealthy family. He still kept his identity secret, but reportedly would leave his home in Homer, Nebraska, where he continued to work in law enforcement, only to come back a few days later in a nice suit carrying cash. Hmm, not at all suspicious, right? At this time, he told his wife Kathleen, who he had met in Nebraska, and their four sons, his true identity. They did not have any idea who he was before this time. His true identity became public knowledge in 1951 when Hart was called to testify at his brother Ralph Capone's tax evasion trial. Ralph had apparently written down Hart's name as the real owner of a home Ralph owned in Wisconsin. Hart actually testified on Ralph's behalf. Um, Funny thing is, he insisted that he be allowed to wear his 10-gallon cowboy hat while doing so. Some historians believe by testifying on Ralph's behalf that Hart was probably perjuring himself. But MacArthur believes Hart was trying to pay back his family for helping him through the Great Depression. Richard Hart, a.k.a. Vincenzo Capone, died just a year later. According to his obituary in the Lincoln Star on October 2, 1952, the former lawman had been nearly blind for almost two years following a gunfight in Sioux City, Iowa, but the cause of his death was listed as a heart ailment. He was just 60 years old. He's buried in a cemetery in Homer, Nebraska, with a tombstone that reads simply, Richard J. Hart, 1892 to 1952. The name Vincenzo Capone is nowhere to be found. Next time on Back Then, part two of the Capones in North Dakota. Did Al Capone actually come to visit his brother in North Dakota? Hmm, maybe. A couple of waitresses at a small town cafe in Petersburg says they were visited by Al Capone and his crew and they served them steaks. That's next time on Back Then. Thanks for joining me.